Hey everybody, Matt Bray with the Tom J. Krieger team. This is the Nitty Gritty Podcast. We are talking about Mortgage 201 today, episode 33 with the amazing Sienna Cormier. Let's get into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. This is episode 33 of the Nitty Gritty Podcast. Have the beautiful Sienna Cormier still with us. We are going a little deeper this week. We are talking Mortgage 201. Ooh. Ooh. We touched on 101 a couple of weeks ago. We tried to keep it light and airy. This week we're going deep and dark about mortgage. <laughs> Should we um, touch a little bit on how confused we got with the 101 or 101.2 oh, or is it 201? We just didn't know. I don't have a university <laughs> education. I don't know what these classes are meant to be. <laughs> well, I don't know what to start. I don't think I ever got out of the 101s, to be honest with you. Um <laughs> So we touched on in 101 different types of loans, different types of down payments very, very sure. lightly, but I want to dig deeper. One of the things you mentioned actually in the previous podcast, episode 32, you talked about pre-qualifications, pre-approvals. Mm -hmm. What is the difference? Right. Even I got confused at this at the beginning. I'm like, <laughs> both of them say I can buy a house. What's, What's the, the difference? difference? Um, it's going to be on the same form in Arizona. Okay. Uh, I have a letter that I could provide, essentially, that would differentiate Make the two. Yeah. yeah. Make a difference between um, the two. But the pre-qualification is going to be possibly the lender may not even have any documents to verify the information that they're writing a pre-qual on. Okay. Um, so they it could just be off of what was told to them, stated income, stated assets. Stated debt. Stated debt. Okay. Well, they should pull a credit report, so we should know debts at okay. least. Um, but a pre-approval is going to be where it's ran through that automated underwriting system. So pre-approvals have been underwritten. You've had a team of... It's know, been pre-underwritten. Okay. So it's, it's an automated system. Okay. Uh, there is an option to take it a step further and have loans completely basically underwritten without the address and then it's like a to be determined loan okay. and we can have that i typically do that in cases where i may be a little bit questionable on a certain piece or i want to see if underwriting is going to accept it or if it flies if the work history shoddy or you know if there's some kind of issue that i'm not 100 percent comfortable with i'll have an actual person underwriter, okay. go ahead and look at it. So you send the file to the back, the goblins get a hold of it. Yes. Micro magnifying glass so they go over every line mm -hmm. and make sure everything lines up with what they've said, basically. Right. And or it tells me what we need to get documentation wise to make this fly okay. or what will help or what I should do in the interim. That way, before I have you out there writing an offer, you're in contract, you've done your inspections, you paid for your appraisal, surprise, this is going to be an issue. You. Yeah. I hate surprises. Yeah. Don't want them. Okay. So <laughs> is it is it fair to say that everybody should be pre-approved? At or least is it easier to just be pre-qualified? I mean, it's easier to be pre-qualified. I think a lot of online lenders, they're just doing pre-qualifications. Their pre-qualification form barely even has any information on it. It doesn't yeah. tell you whether they verify documentation. Um, so like I said before, anything I send is going to be pre-approved. I'm going to have verified assets, income, credit, everything that I need. I'm going to have the documentation to prove that it's good. And we see that on the Arizona prequels that you send mm -hmm. us. Like they have all the little check boxes. Like you've seen the W-2s. Right. You've seen, you know, any gift documentation yep. and, and tax returns and all that sort of stuff. So. I'm, I'm a, am I right in saying like when those boxes have checked, they've kind of already started that automated pre-approval process? Right. Okay. Um, I mean, and they should, you know, it doesn't, there's not a box on there for that. But often what I'll do if needed, especially in this market, is I'll pick up the phone and I'll call the, the listing agent and let them know, hey, like we're good to go. We're pre-approved. I have everything I need. Super strong all around, I don't see any issues being presented. And I love that. I think that's one of the strongest things we can do in this market when working with buyers, you know, is when you just present like a pack, an offer to a, a, a listing agent, Yeah. you know, you get that pre-approval letter on there, but like having the phone call from you that says, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, they have X, they have Y, they have Z, I've seen X, Y, and Z, we're really strong. Yeah. It just offers that little bit more validation to the, about the buyer. For sure. But I also think, um, I also think it elevates me as an agent. 
Yeah. When I'm working with a lender who's willing to pick up the phone and call a listing agent, it elevates me to the next level For where sure. they're going to look at that offer and be like, this is a well-rounded, cohesive team of people working for this client. So I love the fact you do that. It makes me look amazing <laughs> to all these listing agents. So That's the goal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why we work together. It's just made me look awesome. Um, documentation. Yeah. Let's get deep and dark about okay. that. Okay. So we have a list here of some documentation. Talk to me like the very standard things that you need. Very need. standard. Yep. So if you're a W-2 employee, um, the very standard things I'll need, your um, most recent W-2. Yep. You'll need your two most recent pay stubs if it's if you're paid bi-weekly. If you get paid weekly, we need four. If okay. you're paid monthly, we'll need two. Um, if and then additionally, we'll need your two months bank statements. So your okay. two most recent bank statements, the full statement, all pages, even the blank ones. I don't care what it says. I need all the pages. Um, if it says just one admit, of... Just don't omit that one <laughs> yeah. page. It's like McDonald's, 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 McDonald's. So like, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to think I'm fat. No, if it says it one it. of six, I want six pages. Okay. Um, if it know. says one of four, four pages. But yeah, a lot of times in your statement, there's like blank this page is initially or intentionally left blank and you people need, take that out, but need we need page. it okay. um, because we don't know that that's what it says. And yeah. then we think that you're hiding something. So we sense. have to have every piece of everything. Um, if you're a self-employed borrower, it gets a little bit more complicated. You'll need, and, and not really complicated, but more documentation. So um, tax returns, business and personal, your federal portion. Um, not just the state. Not just the state. Okay. And we'll need two years, sometimes only one year, but it's safe to, to assume two years, K-1s, 1099s. Um, so this isn't documentation that's super hard to get. They should already, should already have, have it. it. You know, they've already got access to their bank statements, either mm -hmm. online or if not, just walk into your bank and they'll print them off right. for you. Um, your W-2s you, you should already have or you, you can, can get, get from online. your employer or you can get online. <laughs> yeah. um, and then 1099s, you know, we're 1099 so we can get them from our accountant or we yeah. have them online. So it's not like there's a lot of documents where you're like, ugh, where it's am I so going to get simple. that from? And if you're not self-employed, chances are I don't need your tax returns. Okay. Um, so that makes it even easier. Uh, the only time we'll need tax returns is if there's other income, like if you have rental properties or if we need to verify that you're – part of your income is not taxable, then we'll, we'll ask for that. But, and your standard borrower that's self or that's not self-employed that works for a W-2, it's easy. So talk, so W-2 relatively easy. Let's dig into self-employed. You mm -hmm. know, I'm self-employed. You are. Um, I am. <laughs> um, I know going through the loan process that there is a lot of documentation I had to give. So dig into self-employed. You've got them written down here, but I want you to talk through them because it's a lot more. Sure. You know? Yeah. So we'll most likely need the two years tax returns, like I was saying. Uh, we'll also need a year-to-date profit and loss statement, Okay. Um, which if you're a business owner, hopefully you know what that is. I don't want to have to dig into that. But if you do <laughs> you need help, that? call your accountant. Have you had that? Where somebody's <laughs> yes. like, I own my own business. Like, do you a, have a PL? and a PL? And like, a, a, a what? Like, Wait, did you say P N L or P and L or is it P slash L? Like, it doesn't matter. Call your accountant. Call your accountant. They're like, well, my uncle Dave does my accounts. So well, like, call your call uncle. uncle Dave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need a P and L. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you have 1099s, 1099s. If you have Schedule Ks or K ones, we need the the complete. Just basically, don't hide anything. Just give me all of it. I'd rather have too much than not enough. Okay. So if you don't have to separate your state from your federal. I can go ahead and omit what I don't need, but at least if you're getting me everything, if you don't know 100%, more is better, and then I can decipher and figure out what I do and don't want. Okay, and you give people a list. Like, this yeah. isn't like they need to know. No, no, I'm all in, in wait until I give you that list because yeah. I may not need certain things, and then that way I can ask for them as soon as I get your application, I'll better be able to understand how you're employed, whether you have other investment properties that you own, you know, on yeah. and on and on. Yeah. So, yeah, once I take a look at it, then I'll get you a list and it will be detailed. Oh, I, I know. I've received that email. Yeah. Don't you worry. <laughs> um, 
So we've got down here, you know, some of the documentation. You've got extra, uh, you know, extra like mortgage statements, mm -hmm. uh, proof of payment, sourcing deposits. Like, what are some of these documents, and what are they? What are they? If we were to provide them, what do they enable you to do? Sure. So um, if you have any large deposits in your bank account that's out of the norm, so okay. outside of your normal pay or there's no there's no explanation for them as far as we're concerned, we're going to ask what that source was. So and this could be from anything. This anything. could be from a... Um, a family member passing away and leaving you, an, you know, an amount of money, which is awesome, and then you put that in that bank account, like, you're going to need to know where it come from. Right. Right. And so we'll need that documentation. We basically have to go backwards and say, okay, where's the letter from the attorney or the estate that told you you were getting this money, and we need a copy of that check. Yeah. Um, the one thing that can be a problem is people that don't put their money in the bank, that they, they just – have put their it, mattress the money. Mattress. Um, and we've so had those. we've had plenty of those. So that money needs to be in the bank and we need to not see that deposit. So if you take, if you're in contract and you get this, you decide, hey, this $20,000 I've been keeping in my safe instead of in the bank, I'm going to go, that's my down payment. Like it won't, it's not, oh, it's not sourceable. Okay. Um, the only luck I've had with that is I had somebody that was taking cash out, making withdrawals regularly and stashing it away for their down payment. With you. And I had to backtrack everything when they made that deposit, add up all of their withdrawals, and it had to equal what they redeposited back in in order to justify this So it was deposit. almost like they didn't want to spend it. Mm -hmm. And you can see this. Like, So they were being conscientious. They didn't want to spend their deposit money. Right. So like, for instance, something probably my parents would do is take the money out, put it in a purse, put it under the pillow. Mm -hmm. I don't spend it. That's my down payment. Yep. But you've got to trace where we that money's come from. We have to trace it, yeah. Okay. So the Patriot Act and all those things that came into play after 9-11 definitely make us source where these deposits are coming from. Okay. Hey, everyone. We want to interrupt this episode to let you know that we are a Keller Williams Southern Arizona franchise. Also, we are licensed realtors practicing equal housing. Now let's get you back to the podcast. So if you if you are a buyer listening and you've done that, <laughs> where you've been like, oh, I'm going to take you know a hundred, two hundred dollars a month out and squirrel it under my mattress, please put it, in the bank now. Put, put it back into a bank account. <laughs> or set, you know, it, the easy thing to do is go to your bank and set up a savings account yep. and just draft it straight over from checking to savings. It's traceable. Or don't link it if you don't want access to it. Exactly that. And then, you know, cut up your savings card. Yep. Put it, you know, put it in a baggie with ice and freeze it so you can never get to yeah. it. All that sort of stuff. Just make the money traceable. Um, um, gifts. Okay. Gifts is another Huge. source, yeah. right? So uh, you can get a gift. It has to be a gift. It cannot be borrowed funds. So whoever that donor is, your gifter, the person giving you the money, they have to be willing to sign a letter that states that they do not expect repayment for this money. Um, and so it has to 100% be a gift. Uh, depending on how that money is either deposited into your account or sent straight to the title company, um, will determine how much documentation we need from your donor. Uh, but most times we're going to need a copy of the check that was deposited and also we need to see the bank statement that shows the money leaving the account and then also your your bank statement showing the money is cleared Saved. in your account. So we have to see the whole thing. And if your donor has a weird deposit that gave them that money to deposit to you, guess what? We've got to source that one so too. So if their money was mattress money. So keep it clean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. keep it clean. And gifts are gifts are gifts are common. Right. You know, we've worked deals where people have been giving gifts by family members, you know, mm -hmm. um, towards their down payment or their closing costs and stuff like totally. that. But like it happens. Yeah. Parents want to support kids. They're like, hey, I go, guys, here's ten thousand dollars. But it's gotta be traced. It's totally okay. As long as your donor understands, I'm probably going to need to intrude in their life as well. Yeah, yeah. And also, like you said, they've got to sign a document. Yep. It can't be a, here's 10000 for your down payment. You can pay me back and sometime. And definitely don't put loan on the check. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, loan for down payment. Like, that's not going to work either. Yeah. It has to be the word gift for down payment and do not reset, do not expect it back. Um, down payment sources, okay, Um Big topic. And again, we are probably going to have to go into another episode at some I think point because so. there's just so much data to bring you. Yeah. Um, but down payment sources. So we've got savings, 
retirement accounts, 401ks, um, stocks and bonds. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's a lot probably crypto. Can we yeah, do those? You can. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Um, as long as we can get the statement, we can see the, the crypto account okay. and you can prove it, then yes. And obviously it needs to be converted to US dollar. Okay. Um, but that's like a source. We just trace the source. Okay, so basically down payment sources, as long as it's sourceable, and it's where yours. does the money come from? Yeah. And it's yours. You could pretty much use anything. Yep. Right? Okay, great. So again, if you don't have a savings account, but you have a 401k with your company or your employer, you can use that. And a lot of people don't know this about 401ks, which I think is a good thing to mention, is most employers allow you to make a hardship withdrawal from your 401k. It may not even be the employer, but the 401ks, you're able to make a hardship withdrawal to purchase a primary residence. And that way you're not taxed. Oh, we You don't get the like tax that. penalty. Um, and so you can always pay it back in or you just take that withdrawal and it's it's for your down payment. Um, you'll have to provide certain proof to your 401k company, but- That you've used it for a, more, mm-hmm. a down payment. And they also, most, most of them allow loans as well if you do want to repay it back. But yeah, you can just do a hardship withdrawal for your down payment. So can you, for people who have a 401k and you know they're thinking maybe, I didn't know that, this is amazing. I can buy a house using a 401k. Yeah. Do you read, can you dig into them for them and help them handhold them with the 401k process, like who to talk to, what to look for, who to ask? Yeah, it's, it's typically pretty simple though. Okay. They'll just, most companies, you can go online and withdraw options and it'll point it down. It'll tell you, oh, okay, give us a copy of your, they still call it for some reason on all the 401k sites, a GFE, which is a good faith estimate instead of a LE, which is your loan estimate. Okay. It's the new form. Um, but yeah, they'll ask for, or the, a copy of the contract and the loan estimate so that they can see how much cash the person's going to have to come out with. Okay. So in this episode, you know, there's a lot we're talking about here. We've talked about documentation, which is huge. We scratched the surface in 101. We're going right. deeper in two on. So we've scratched the surface on documentation. There's a lot of it, but easily sourceable stuff. And then obviously the down payment sources is huge. From what I'm personally hearing, just make it traceable sources. 100%. As long as we have a as paper long as trail. It's legitimate and yeah. we can have an explanation for it. It's fine. Like if the money washed up on a beach in Cabo in Saran Wrap and you just happen to take it home, like mm, we yeah. may have a slight issue. You know what I mean? You can sell a car, <laughs> get a get a bill of sale. Okay. That's what people they forget to do is they don't get What's a bill of sale. What's the craziest you've seen? Um, a model ship. So I have a client that builds model ships like. Uh, <laughs> like I didn't know that was a thing. Like and he sold one for six thousand dollars okay so granted like to me i'm like what but it's i guess like it's a thing like for it took him two years to build like it's custom it's beautiful okay um but it's personal property that's sold so we have to have a transact like a we need to Receipt, source it a right sale, yeah. yeah and so he did his bill of sale but like the underwriters are like a ship for five, for six thousand dollars <laughs> and I was like I know I thought the same thing so what we did was we documented other like um sales right so okay. I pulled up comps essentially comparables to what he made that showed what these ships go for thirteen thousand dollars like crazy um and so we were able to get it through because typically personal property as your source would be like if you sold a car and okay. then because we, we have to we have to be able to document that the amount given is makes sense to the value because yeah. you can't just sell your shoe for six thousand dollars and say no these were really nice shoes like i mean they need to be worth that amount yeah, yeah, yeah. um and so we had to prove it, which was tough, but it ended up, we got it done. So with cars, boats, mobile homes, things like that, we can pull all of that. That's, you know, we can pull plenty of information through KBB or Nada that tells us the value of this thing. So there you go. If you have a $6,000 model ship sat on your shelf at home, you can use it to buy a house and see and as the girl. You can use it to buy a house, but like, I need documentation. (laughs) You are the model ship lender. That's exactly <laughs> what we are. That's your new nickname. That's how we're going to tag you on all of these, the model ship lender. Um, awesome, awesome episode. We are, Guys, we have so much more that we can talk so about. Much. We only have a set amount of time that we can talk about this sort of stuff. But 
like I've said before, if you want more information um, about lending, documentation, sources of funds, um, please give Sienna a call. This is her life. This is what she does. She's amazing. Um, so give her a call. Let her give you the information. Great episode. Next episode, 34. Um, we're going to be talking about down payment assistance. Ooh. Okay. I love this episode. I'm excited for it. So tune in for next week, episode 34, and we'll see you then. Hey, thank you for listening and watching the Nitty Gritty Podcast here with the Tom J. Krieger team. If you are thinking about buying a home, selling a home, or even investing in real estate, please reach out to us. We are local here in Tucson, Arizona, but we are also connected to over 4,000 agents across the US. So again, looking to buy, sell, or invest in your hometown, reach out to us and let us connect you.